Today, I'm going to set up a Raspberry Pi from scratch and walk through the initial configuration. This Raspberry Pi is going to be used in a lot of different projects, so I thought I should start here and document this configuration. The Raspberry Pi that I'll be using is a 4B with 4 gigabytes of RAM. I'll get started by using Google to locate the Raspberry Pi Imager application. In the Google search bar, type in Raspberry Pi Imager. What I'm looking for is raspberrypi.org slash software. So I'll go ahead and click on that link and I'll put a link to this link in the description. And so on this web page, we'll scroll down and we'll choose download for Windows. Okay, it has been downloaded. We'll go ahead and click on it so we can run it. Click on install. And then I'll leave this checked. Run Raspberry Pi Imager and click on finish. First, we'll choose the OS. I'm going to go into other and choose the Raspberry Pi OS full, which is a 2.8 gigabyte download. Secondly, I'll choose the SD card that I want to use. And then finally, click on write to tell the image your application to write the image to the card and wait a while. Now I've already done this, so I'm not going to click on it again. We'll go ahead and close out this application. And we'll close the browser. The Raspberry Pi can be set up from the very beginning to run headlessly, and that's how I'll be setting it up today. In order to do that, two files need to be set up, WPA underscore supplicant.conf and SSH. WPA underscore supplicant.conf pre-configures the wireless network settings using the wireless network name and password you define in the file. If you're going to hook up a network cable, then there is no need to do this. So let's go ahead and open this up, take a look at it. We'll use Notepad to look. So you can see there's a configuration settings in here, but the one we're interested in is the SSID, where we'll put in our network name and then the PSK, which is the password, and you put in the password for your network, whatever that might be. We'll go ahead and close this file. Now what I showed is a sample and really you should take a look at the link in the description for how to configure the file. The SSH file, simply by being present, tells the Pi to enable SSH when it first boots. I'll use this remote shell to set a few additional settings after it boots for the first time. So you can create the SSH file without any extension, and you don't need to put any data in there at all. It can be blank, it can be empty. And then once we have these two files, we'll move them over to the whatever drive letter you might have, but it'll be labeled boot. And so we'll copy these two or move them. So we have SSH and WPA underscore supplicant.conf now in place. Now that we have the OS image on the SD card and the configuration files moved over, the SD card can be inserted into the Pi. So we'll go ahead and eject this. Close this out, and I'll move the SD card over to the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. Now we'll go ahead and boot the Pi. It's going to take a couple of minutes. While that's working, the Raspberry Pi, by default, is going to advertise itself on the network as Raspberry Pi, one word. We can connect via SSH using the Raspberry Pi name and also specify the username. If SSH can't find the Raspberry Pi, refer to the link in the description for alternative ways to find out the IP address of the Pi so you are able to connect to it.
Windows 10 and Windows Server 2019 come with an SSH utility built in. So we'll go ahead and run that. Go to the command prompt, type in SSH, and then Raspberry Pi, and then minus L for the login name, which is Pi. Now it's telling us it uh, hasn't seen this device before. Are we sure we want to continue connecting to it? We'll say yes, we're sure. Okay, a full yes. All right, so the password for the Raspberry Pi by default is Raspberry, so we'll go ahead and type that in. And now we're connected. On Microsoft clients, I prefer to use the Microsoft built-in remote connectivity tools to connect. So I'll set up an RDP server on this Raspberry Pi. To install the RDP server onto the Pi, you run sudo space app dash get space install space xrdp and then yes to continue and this will take a minute or two to run so we'll come back after it's done the raspberry pi comes with a vnc server by default but you need to enable it so if you'd rather use VNC rather than RDP, there's another command we can run to get that configured. Type in sudo space raspy dash config and press enter. And then go down to number three and press enter, interface options. Then go down to VNC and press enter. And here you would arrow over to yes and press enter to enable it. Now I'm not going to be using VNC, so I'm not going to enable it. So I'm going to hit go back to no, press enter, and escape out of this. Now that we have RDP server set up on the Pi, we can use the RDP client on the Microsoft Windows to run it. So we'll go ahead and go to run, type in mstsc space forward slash v space raspberry Pi. We'll see we're connecting. You say yes, don't ask me again. I know what this is. And now we'll go ahead and log in for the first time on the desktop client. So type in the Pi for the username. Raspberry is the default password. And click on OK. And now this window's warning us that SSH is on and there's still the default password. So we need to change that. We'll go ahead and click on OK. That will get changed during this wizard. So go ahead and click on Next. So we'll change the country settings, the language settings, and the time zone settings. For me, I'll click both of these. Click on Next. Now here I'll enter in a new password. I don't see the black border around the screen, so I'll just click Next. We can skip scanning for networks as we've already configured this using the WPA underscore supplicant dot comp file. And now it's time to update software. This is the last step, so we'll just go ahead and click on Next. Now this is going to take a long time, maybe half hour, maybe more. After this is complete, it will want to reboot. So when that happens, just click on Yes, Reboot. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Thank you very much for watching. Stay creative.